Hey guys, it's uh, January 30th, 2016. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the charts, okay? What I want to discuss real quickly today is uh, just some basic principles in uh, technical analysis and how we can use that into the charts. I mean, there's so many different things out there. There's uh, trade um, strategies and setups, uh, indicators. Uh, it, it can be pretty confusing uh, which one to use and which one works for you. Uh, I'm not saying that what I'm about to talk about right now will work for everybody, but it's just a basic principle that everybody knows and everybody should understand uh, when looking at charts. And, and I'm just going to talk about uh, support and resistance and how to kind of trade that. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about the technical side of how you know these uh, support and resistance lines are drawn in. Um, there is a uh, service that I actually go through, which is about fifty dollars a month, um, or, or equal to about one point on the e S and P um, or E mini. Uh, so um, the provider, you know, draws in these lines uh, for me before the market opens, depending on uh, what the price action has been doing overnight. That you can see in the grayed out areas. Uh, the dark areas here on the Think or Swim charts are the uh, live um, uh, market. Uh, during the uh, US open hours um, and basically what I'm going to talk about is going to be applied to how you can trade in the overnight sessions and you know these support and resistance lines are basically um, pretty strong areas of resistance and support based off of um, market profile or or um, just the um, value areas that the market has been kind of consolidating in certain price points um, that create a resistance and support zones and I'm going to go kind of into the practical side of how you can trade that in just a second so real, real quickly um, for those of you who don't know and, and those of you who do know um, so, so we have a, a basis to, of discussion for this video um, okay so on the upside if, if the market's either trending upwards or looking like it's about to trend upwards once it breaks resistance that becomes your new support okay on all that is, is if your resistance is your ceiling. So if you break through the ceiling, and, and I mean, imagine you being Superman and breaking through a ceiling, you know what's below you. Your ceiling or your resistance is now your what? Your floor or your support. Um, and the same is true on the on the opposite end. If if the market is trending downwards or looks like it's got, about to move down, and uh, you want to um, potentially look for a trade setup, one way is to look at that. Um, uh, is to look for a broken support area which is your floor so if you break through the floor and you're in the incredible hulk and somehow you're able to get through the floor that floor now when you look up is now what your resistance your ceiling right so if you test if you're going up you're, and you break up and you come back down what your floor your support should allow for you to bounce up so in that case you would trade and you would buy in the futures market and on the downside, if your support is broken and comes back up into resistance, you would sell. Okay, so that's just the basics. Now, well, I won't talk about you know um, position sizing and and how to and how to set your stops and all that. But I'll kind of go into the basics of how I've been kind of trading the markets lately. Now, overnight, you don't have all these market internals here to the left. And if you've seen my other videos, you know I use the tick, the advanced decline, and and volume. To kind of like gauge um, where to get in and out of the markets um, in accordance with these resistance support lines, and also based on um, just you know price action and um, the candlesticks as it starts moving up and down. And overnight, though, you don't have that. So um, how do you trade that? And that's what I'm about to go into right now. Right now, I have a five-minute chart open real quick, um, and you can kind of see that uh, the market's kind of been trending. Uh, sideways um, really just consolidating in this area and if I zoom out even further I'll do like a 30 minute chart real quickly um, what you'll notice is um, it's actually been in this range for a, quite a long time so you can kind of basically see this little floor here it, it peaked below here into 1804 um, uh, a while back and uh, previous weeks but really it's been kind of consolidating in this range right here Right, if I could just draw a quick circle right here, um, and we we're looking for a direction move in outside of this, whether it's to the upside or to the downside. And as we can see on on Friday, um, at the end of this month, it it actually just ended up breaking out of it and trending upwards. 
and I'll go into that real quick if we want to do a quick breakdown of that. So I'm not looking at the five minutes. So let me go ahead and do a one minute chart. And we'll, and we'll take some examples from overnight or um, the Globex session. And that's, uh, again, highlighted in the gray area. Okay. And, and these resistance and support zones, they kind of change depending on the um, previous day or overnight right before the market opens. So these lines may not be completely accurate because they, they change every day. But they're pretty, on, on average right now, uh, should show some, um, some pretty good um, uh, trade setup. So let's just zoom in even further. This was, uh, let's see, uh, the 22nd of January. So this is a Globex session. Now we won't, we'll just ignore this side right here, but say that you know we're seeing the market trend right downward, and then it starts moving up. Well, obviously, you know if it's moving up after it broke this um, support level, this is now resistance in this time period. When it came back up, you would have sold, and you can see it kind of sold off a little bit. You know, it's like two two points or whatever, um, but it didn't hold. And say you did get stopped out, and it went up. Now your next trade is really for this thing to um, come up, right, um, break out of this area, right, and you can see that that was kind of your previous um, high before it broke down, um, so that, that'll be a reference area um, overnight, or this could be a reference area overnight, and once it kind of comes back up um, and, and comes back down, uh, that would have been your signal to, to buy here, because, you know, obviously, if this was your resistance, it should have held and, and came back down, and this thing would have continued trending down. However, it didn't start moving up, so you can see that the market is now strong, or buyers are now present, and this market is, has a potential to move up, right? And that could have been a, a trade uh, um, idea right there to buy into the next uh, resistance zone here, okay? And obviously, the colors are different now because this, these resistance and support zones are in reference to what happened at this price point here okay what happened recently um, and um, I have these up because uh, I can't go back to every day that I have these re support and resistance lines that have changed but um, just just look at these as support and resistance lines usually the red is indicating resistance and green is support um, on this chart but for the for this example we'll just look at them as support and resistance depending I mean it doesn't really matter what color they are okay um, for this example so and I'll walk you through this so as it comes up here this is your next resistance but you see that it really I mean when it first tests it what happens as soon as it touches it touches the bottom of that um, resistance zone it, it kind of came back down right so you want to take your profits at each zone that's one way to do it, especially if you're trading just one contract. But if you're trading two contracts, obviously you can take one and wait to see if it gets to the other side or breaks out, right? So this one kind of stayed within the zone for a while and then finally broke out. So your next trade idea would have been to uh, buy because now what we're, we're trending what? We're trending up, right? And every time we're trending up when we break a resistance zone or resistance, broken resistance on the upside becomes new support, okay? So it broke up out of here initially consolidated broke up out of here came back down into the resistance zone and you really need to see you don't want to see something like this where it's just hovering right in that zone you want to see it actually break out of that zone come back down to test it have your stop you know within this market about two point stop three point stop at the most um, from what I've seen lately in the price action and then that should be giving you enough room if you get in at the right price right if you're getting at the right um, um, price point to give you enough room for the for the um, trade to work out for you so that's your support zone now after it broke through it um, and you know once you buy here you're expecting this thing to move up so even from here at say like the 85 it's 86 87 88 89 let's just say um, you know that's a good you know three to four points you could have made depending on uh, how long you would have wanted to keep into that trade you're expecting you to go to the other zone but um, you know, it's good to kind of take profits as you go up and overnight just because you don't have the internals to really tell you, you know, how the market's uh, really reacting at those areas. And there's other things called footprint charts that you can use. Uh, and I, I'm not sure if they work overnight. I'm, I'm sure they do because it's, it's really just an algorithm that shows you the difference between um, buyers and sellers and if there's an um, imbalance. 
of buyers or sellers and we can go into that in some other time I'm um, sorry this video is already long but good stuff here so it comes back down again um, still resistance I mean still support right until it breaks below um, usually you don't want to keep buying um, after it tests a certain area over and over again but in this case it tested it and it held right so in this instance if you would have held down here you would have kept your contracts in there never would have stopped you out if you had a two to three point stop right and then you would have been able to make it to the next zone so it did take some time for this trade to particularly work out a little bit shorter in these time frames at the beginning I noticed in the Globex market so then another tip in the Globex market is I noticed moves in the beginning really kind of move in that direction because um, whoever is kind of buying or selling the market is, is, is really in control at the beginning. And then later on, once you get to these different zones, you start getting um, uh, trades in the, in the opposite direction, kind of uh, um, fading out the, uh, either the buyers or the sellers, whoever's in control at the time. So right now, buyers in control. So you always got to think buying, 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 not selling. Okay, so you're buying again at the zone or um, holding the uh, initial um, retracement into that zone, into the next the zone up here. So you could have sold up here and that would have gave you, you know, over five to six points off of that trade right there. And at that point, you're kind of getting chopped up. Okay, so you got to really kind of think of, you know, what 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 is my... You know what is my profit target for the day have I had enough especially when you start seeing price action like this where it breaks up breaks out comes back down breaks right back down through the um, support zone because it was resistance broke out of it this should have been my support but it didn't uh, hold it and I mean you've been kind of trending upwards for quite a little while in the globex session right that's that's quite a move already you know so at that point you're just seeing this thing consolidate there's no real trade here I mean you could trade in between here if you really wanted to right but it's really hard to see in real time obviously um, this uh, resistance zone that broke through that was support that you thought now became resistance again because what happened that support got broken right so once that support gets broken and the markets weak especially when from zone to zone now when it comes back up this is now resistance again you could have sold here and came back down and 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 made a, um, a trade from from zone to zone here okay but you have to be patient in instances like this because you know you're still buying you're thinking you're buying buying as it comes back up right so when it breaks down below and shows weakness initially all right um, you're gonna look for a sell opportunity as it comes back up the first time okay and when it comes back down obviously you know these were all support zones um, as it kind of broke through so when it comes back down and uh, the first time tests you can see the first time it tested this this was your support because it broke through initially came back down to, and this was your support this one didn't work out but this one worked out for you and could have made it uh, from zone to zone but look what happens the second time it tested it actually comes back down you probably would have been stopped out and then it comes back up again and and then kind of gives you conviction to the upside so when it comes back down again, you could have bought. But really, this is just chop. I mean, if you really want to scalp and do that, that's fine. Um, but you got to be more disciplined, and and I wouldn't recommend that. Okay. And then the um, daytime or regular hours, uh, we won't go over that. But same thing is is, is true, uh, except for we have internals to kind of give you a better idea of uh, where to get in on the market. So let's go to another day. So some good examples. Um, and, and one thing, one thing though is like you have to realize that like in the Globex market, um, one of the one of the um, I guess you could say advantages is that uh, when the market does trend in one direction, it it, it typically keeps moving in that direction um, because you know I mean the U.S. market's a little bit different. A lot more volume um, when you have low volume low liquidity like this um, once it kind of moves in one direction it, it typically um, moves in that direction so you can have a lot more conviction so in this case right here even right off the open all right well, let's let's look here so you gotta look at the uh, context the previous day previous day broke out of this range came down so now you're trending down right and this was your support and now is your resistance so the market opens hits that resistance zone right um, holds and sells off so that could have been your first trade of the day right there right 
and you're thinking, all right, this thing's gonna move down. So zone to zone, you could have made some ticks. I mean, some uh, points there. About one, two, three, four, five points right there, probably on average, depending on where you got in. Okay. And then it just kind of bounced around here for a while. No trades to take unless it comes back up here, right? And a first time test. Uh, after this, after this initial move, um, you could have you could have sold again, but I wouldn't expect it to go all the way back down, but it does. So at that point, all right, now you're looking for the next support zone that's to be broken. All right, kind of broke down here, came back up, didn't work out. All right, so then you really want some conviction. It really moves down, right? Um, hits some of these other zones, retraces. You could have sold here into the zone here. Same thing down here, broke, break below, broke below this support zone, uh, came back to the other zone here, comes back up to this resistance, could have sold here, all right? And now, again, trending down, and then you gotta really look at what's going on once the trend kind of uh, fades out. So now all this downward momentum is off, obviously shifting now to the upside, okay? So it moves back up, breaks back up below here, right? Comes back into the zone, doesn't break back below the zone, holds the support area, and then comes back up again, right? So when it comes back into the zone again, this would have been your buy here, right? Into the next zone up here. I, I understand these are just real basic um, trade ideas here, but it's just to kind of drill into you how to kind of read the market, read the, the charts um, using support and resistance zones. And, and it's very basic stuff, and you can kind of create your own trades based off of that. Same thing, now it's moving up, so now you're, you're trending up, but, but what happened before, these were all your... Well, let me, zoom out even more this was your initial resistance zone right that that came down and started this downward move right we found some strong support here and started moving up now obviously already tested it once twice third time it just breaks right through and in that case that becomes now your support zone once it breaks above there right Breaks above there, holds it, comes back down, and you could have bought here. Um, and it doesn't move to the next zone, stops you out for a, for a two you know two point stop or whatever. Okay, and comes down, but really holds this area here and doesn't keep moving down. So, um, be, because you kind of made this trade here and uh, the trend is now moving up, right? You're gonna look for areas to buy, so you wouldn't want to buy here, and there's nothing to buy here, obviously, unless it came back to this zone. Um, so you wait, then it comes back up, comes back down to the zone again. Um, it doesn't quite hit this zone. It does during the uh, daytime hour. So these are good reference points, even during the um, open market, when the U.S. market comes back down and hits that support area um, for a potential buy here. So again, same thing. Resistance being broken becomes support. Support being broken becomes um, resistance. So let's go through another idea, another um, day. Pretty choppy day that day. Uh, let's see. Uh, All right, so this day right here was prior to Friday's open where it just kind of drove up, okay? So we've been consolidating up and down for a while. And this day, and, and the zones aren't, are, are again, changed here, but um, market was moving down. Sorry about that. Um, actually, it was just kind of consolidating back and forth, back and forth, and then um, stayed within this uh, resistance level every time it hit stay below it stay below it and then finally finally breaks through up here right and then comes back to this into this support zone okay because um, this support or this resistance at the beginning gets broken so it's a support so you could have bought here from this zone to this zone and made profit and then there was some weird price action, there was some crazy price action, because at this point, there was a lot of volume around this area, and I think algorithms are kind of uh, 
doing their thing and going crazy because the price action was just moving up and down pretty quickly um, and trying to figure out you know who was really going to um, uh, initiate the next move whether to the upside to the downside in the globex session so <clears throat> we had the price still work out from this this zone to here and as soon as you obviously came up to this next resistance zone it came back down so <laughs> that would have been a really fast move literally within two minutes you could have made that trade selling up here down to this zone here and then of course buyers came back in again right because this was resistance became support support went up to resistance right came back down into support came back up to resistance and then there was no trade at that point then you're looking for a break down through here or a break above here on the resistance and it broke above it came back down into the support zone and literally within this one minute bar just shot up to the next resistance uh, zone and then came above it came back down into the zone try to hold and move back up failed came back down all right so this resistance zone that was support that should have held did not got broke broken down so now it's weak so this now resistance zone is now your i mean this this support zone within this time frame now becomes your resistance zone so when it comes back up into this area um you would you would want to sell and then you can see that it does come back down to this zone here once it broke breaks down this support level here right it should have bounced but broke right through um, your next trade could have been here right because this was your resistance now support I mean uh, this was your support now your resistance comes back down into the uh, resistance zone could have sold here to here um, <clears throat> and and I hope you guys are starting to see kind of like a pattern here and I it can go into more depth and just, just kind of show you how in the global session when I notice when it, it breaks the level and actually goes to the other zone and comes back and, and retests it. Those are very high uh, high um, percentage of profitable trades um, and, and you can kind of see uh, that in action. And then same thing on the way on the other side, you know, broke down through here. This trade wouldn't have worked out, but then broke right through. Um, again to the upside this becomes support again could have bought here to here there's so many different trades going on all right and you got to be very selective though and you got to be patient because um, not all of them are going to work out because at that point like I said at the beginning of the day the beginning of the Globex market the the market trends or the market is very consistent in support and resistance lines but once it kind of retests those areas over and over again you see how it kind of just chopped up up and down back and forth back and forth um, I mean obviously you still could have made some money here but they wouldn't have gone from zone to zone like it did earlier during the Globex session so in this in these environments here just kind of went all over the place but this support zone here right where it kind of broke above here and became support again held for the rest of the rest of the uh, globex session into the open right so same idea here it would have kind of consolidated up here obviously and this was your next support zone so once it comes back to the support zone again you could have bought here and if you would have held right into right before the open right you could at least had held up to this zone here without getting stopped out and then once it breaks above here and you see the momentum and the internals you could have just held to the next zone and knowing that we are in consolidation phase and once you break out of a phase that's been kind of going sideways for quite a long time um, most likely or there's a high probability that it's going to trend in, in the uh, direction that it breaks out of and we, we broke on the upside and I can show you guys right here when I zoom out in the five minute just see how it kind of just trended up and down up and down up and down within this area and really this was kind of like your key area right to hold which is the 1897 1895 and then the 1890 to 1887 1888 area right here right so this zone right here was kind of like your 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 top of your resistance um, just kind of hovering peeking up through it below it above it you know what I mean so once this thing broke above it and there was conviction really to the upside this thing just kept moving and you can see that happening uh, on on the Friday um, 
session into the close. So I hope that kind of gave you a pretty good overview. Um, I know I kind of went through it uh, pretty radically, and there were some you know good trades, and there would have been some bad trades. But the basic idea is to go back into that that the basic principles of support and resistance, and be able to read that in real time. Um, and the Globex session is typically slower, um, obviously less volume, which is great for an individual trader like me who doesn't trade, you know, huge contracts. I don't trade like hundreds of contracts um, like people do during the um, U.S. market open. And so you can kind of move in and out um, relatively fine with just a few contracts. And um, these resistance and support lines uh do work and uh, if you have a trade system um, and stay disciplined uh, you, you can make some money in the Globex sessions um, and it, it takes some studying you kinda have to look at it but the reason why I really like it these days and I should have been upfront about this um, at the beginning of the video is that the markets because they're so volatile um, those are really good times to trade in the Globex because you see them move like 5, 10, you know. Um, total, it might move like 20, 30 points within the whole Globex session, but uh, from low to highs, for instance. But within these zones, I mean, you're moving 5 to 10 uh, points. And, and to make 5 to 10 points, 5 to 10 are um, in, in the uh, Globex session is quite a lot. Um, especially right at the beginning of the uh, the Globex session. So that's what I really like about it. Um, and is another time for people that may not be uh, available during the U.S. market hours. And uh, it's just another way to kind of trade uh, the S&P E-minis um, during, during a different time zone uh, and different uh, sessions. So again, uh, this just kind of recaps uh, support and resistance zones, uh, how to trade, and how to kind of analyze um, the price and get in um, and getting out of trades uh, on a very basic level. Um, but I hope that kind of gave you kind of an idea on what to look look for, uh, you know, when you see price kind of moving. So, and one thing I didn't really draw on here real quick, but you know these resistance and uh, support zones would have changed after this period right here but check this out guys I'm gonna go ahead and I say like this was my my peak of my resistance right and you can tell because look what happened it came back up during the beginning of the Globex session it hit that price point and then immediately fell down right so there's a lot of selling pressure here for some reason okay doesn't even matter why but you can go back and you even kind of see right did it the other day right so look what happens hits that area, comes back up, tries to break it again, tries to break it again, tries to break it again. Now this is your resistance zone that you're really looking for, right? So this is your reference area, okay? So when you go into the uh, morning session, check this out, as this thing's moving up, comes up to this next uh, resistance zone and comes back down, really, this was your resistance zone, your immediate resistance zone that you were looking at, that would tell you whether or not buyers or sellers were in control because if the sellers were in control even during the US market hours once it hit this this price zone it should have immediately came back down but it didn't it broke right through so what does that tell you buyers are in control this resistance price point right here really is now your support but check this out came up all right is your resistance zone so obviously when you when you test it for the first time you're gonna see a reaction and it, and it did came back down into that support zone, and what would you have done? And, and if this was a Globex session, what would you have done? Broke above the resistance, now your support. What do you do at the support? You buy. And if you would have bought here, what would you have done? If you would, if, if you would have held, theoretically, of course, you know you would have known what the market was going to do. But the internals kind of told you because check this out. The internals were extremely positive. Stayed up in the in the higher area of the ticks, even up to the um, uh, above the fifteen hundred. I mean the 1200 um, price point all the way almost up to the um, uh, 13, 1300 on the tick. Fans decline, broke above 2000. Um, volume is moving up, right? 
um, it's not really showing any negative um, uh, divergences or movement back down everything's moving up so I've been pretty pretty highly confident trade right here to buy here and just kind of hold it into the next zones knowing that once you broke out of this consolidation right and now this is the top of the consolidation you broke out of it I mean obviously if you know the fact that you know when a market moves out of a consolidation uh, area it's going to move and trend in that direction most likely if you would have bought right here i would have just held it all the way through so of course it's easier to say that in hindsight um but that's not what i'm here to talk about but i am here to, to kind of help you look at a chart and kind of analyze it and walk yourself through this right um and and this is what i do every day when i look at the chart so see how that was resistance finally broke it all right that becomes your support and that's your reference area for a trade setup uh, if you wanted to take a trade right there to initiate into the market all right so hope that helps guys I'm sorry this was such a long video I, I could have recapped it um, really a lot of this stuff is going to be um, consolidated into a course that I'm still uh, working on um, and I hope that uh, you guys are maximizing this time in the market because uh, the market is not going to move like this uh, every day. And uh, when the opportunity presents itself, I mean, that's when you have to uh, capitalize on it. And, and right now, the market's very volatile and it's, and it's moving. And uh, there's a lot of opportunities to make money. All right. So stay disciplined. Um, keep studying. Uh, keep learning the markets. And, and hope you guys uh, uh, can make lots of money in the market. And... Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave your comments. Please subscribe, and continue to um, continue to, uh, to be students of the market. All right, guys. Uh, let's learn together. Hope I can share some more insights, and uh, have a good week. All right. Bye.